I am your resume reader, Crow Song, and today I will be reading to you from Royal Guard by Mirio Wright. However, before we get into chapter 24, I feel I should mention that the author has left a trigger warning for slight violence and homophobia. Now, on to chapter 24, Bustling Town. The day was bright and early. Today was quite a special day. Britain decided to bring America along for a visit to the town for the first time. In Britannia, royals usually visit the town to check on the town's condition and such. Most times, it's just Britain with a few guards to accompany, but today he decided to bring America along so he could learn. America was raised as a sheltered kid who hardly went outside of the palace, though that only made him more curious, which made him secretly sneak out. Isn't coming to town exciting? Britain chimed as the carriage rolled down the main path. I guess? Russia tentatively watched as the scenery swiftly changed to a bustling town. As the carriage came to a halt outside of the main gates, the three figures inside got out and casually walked through the gates, only to be bombarded with townspeople shoving gifts in their faces. Britain dealt with everyone without fault, gently pushing their gifts back. No, no, please keep it. Save them to sell in the markets. We aren't supposed to accept gifts. Calm down, don't push, or else someone will get hurt. He repeated towards everyone, yet a large amount of people were still persistently doing as he said not to. America figured he should maybe try to help a little. Some people listened, and some shrunk back with slight disgust on their faces. Bold of me to assume that people wouldn't be disgusted with me, honestly. After the wave of people calmed down, they went back to doing whatever they were doing before, only sneaking small glances at the three of them as they strolled through town. They occasionally started conversation with the townspeople, for checking the town's status. They asked a few questions, such as, How are crops this season? Are there any crimes they'd like to report? And much more. Britain tried to cheerfully encourage America to ask some of the townspeople, but the American decided not to, so he wouldn't scare away the townspeople with him approaching them. So the two boys followed behind Britain, occasionally getting a lecture as they walked to their next destination. Britain also sort of took the role of a tour guide for the two boys. While falling behind, the two of them were deeply immersed in a conversation. I'm not sure if my dad knows I sneak out here often. He's either a really good actor or just clueless. I'm pretty sure it's the former. The Russian scanned his surroundings as he spoke. They arrived at a store. How about you two wait for me out here? I'm sure it won't take long. And so the two of them casually conversed outside of a small shop in town. The townspeople were shocked due to the two good-looking males chatting intimately. Faces like theirs weren't a usual occurrence in town. Both had interesting auras along with their handsome faces. One seemed friendly and cheerful, yet mischievous and boisterous. The other seemed cold and stern, only softening his expression at the sight of the other male. The town is staring at us, Russia inquired. Of course, America also noticed. Pay no mind to them. It's not every day that they see someone as good-looking as me. 
America jokingly said. Though they weren't flat out stalking them, the two males noticed their occasional gazes falling on them. Out of the corner of the American's eye, he saw a small group of girls actually flat out staring at them. How bold, America thought to himself. The prince waved at them, maybe out of courtesy. The girls now knew that they were aware, and they scurried off, giggling. None of the townspeople had ever seen America's face personally, so none of them knew how he looked until today. They only knew he was very good-looking from the rumors, which were surprisingly accurate. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream resounded from the other side of the road. A girl was being beat up by a man. There was another girl behind the man trying to pry her away from him, though. Probably to help the other girl that was being beaten up. The crowd all whipped their heads over to see what was happening. They noticed the scene and were about to cry out for help. But not even a second later, the two figures were already there. The taller one placed a sword to the man's neck. The other went to help the girl on the ground. Drop the girl, the taller one said in an icy tone. America analyzed the man and the two girls while also helping the girl on the ground. The man was no poor man, and judging by his outfit, he was quite a wealthy merchant. The girl behind him was also quite wealthy. The other townspeople couldn't help but exclaim internally, How fast! Is this how talented royals are? The man's face turned ashen white as he dropped the girl. Russia also placed his sword back into its scabbard. The man then pointed at the beaten-up girl. That slut is trying to seduce my daughter. She's doing it because she isn't anyone important and wants to rob us. Just so you know, my daughter isn't interested in woman, so scram! He shouted at the girl. Father, I said I loved her. She did nothing to me, the wealthy girl refuted. Oh, quiet down. People the likes of her should die. How dare she try to turn important people like you into disgusting filth as her. As America helped the girl, constantly reassuring her and asking if she was okay, arrows pierced through his heart. Despite the man's word not being directed toward the American, he still felt hurt. It wasn't hard to see why. He swiftly glanced at the Russian. Not important. People are always at fault, huh? America thought internally, swallowing the lump in his throat out of anxiousness. It's so easy for people lower than oneself to be accused of such things. Even death doesn't seem major as long as it's to someone unimportant. The American's heart started to race, his thoughts messy. Seeing America started to falter and his daughter going up to help the girl on the ground, he lunged at her again, this time catching both males off guard. Suddenly, another figure appeared and restrained the man. You boys okay? He had a familiar British accent. Dad? America snapped out of it. Britain wasn't someone to be taken lightly. After all, he was still a royal who endured many years of princely training when he was younger. He was extremely light on his feet and graceful with each move. Young lady, are you okay? The British man asked the girl on the ground. I, I, I'm fine. She anxiously tried to get up. I'll have a few guards take over here. We really must be going. 
We apologize in advance, Britton said in a reassuring tone. As everything was being settled, the crowd quieted down, and they went their own way. Britain gestured for Russia and America to hurry along. America, are you okay? Russia asked the dazed prince in a worried manner. Tenderness pooled in his eyes. Cold sweat slid down the prince's face as he clenched a fist. I'm fine. Let's go. And that is the end of this chapter. I hope you've enjoyed. I'd like to invite you to join the Discord server. The link is down in the description. Now, have a nice rest of your day, afternoon, night, morning. I don't know. Whatever it is for you. I will see you tomorrow, hopefully.